Hello and welcome to the Monroe Method Clancast. I am Jason Monroe. This is episode 96. My little screen to my left tells me. Um, 96, preparing for the holiday season without gaining weight. Is this a good time to be doing this? I think so. Um, so we're in October. Now you're probably listening to this at a different time, obviously, but we're in October and I touched on this I don't know, quite a few episodes now where people are starting to think about the weight that they're going to gain at Christmas, right? It's inevitable. People who have gained weight every single year at Christmas for as long as they can remember, it just becomes their default programming, right? Because that's just what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to eat to excess and drink to excess and drink all the Baileys and eat all the cheese and crackers and all the nuts and all the Christmas food and the mince pies and everything. And your weight's supposed to go up by 5, 10, 15 pounds. It's not. Um, but it becomes what people get used to because that's what Christmas means to them. And listen, if that's you, then fine. That's up to you entirely. But I would imagine people who are listening to this podcast probably don't want that to happen over Christmas and New Year. And <clears throat> this is this is what I touched on, actually. It was episode um, <clears throat> 90, where we spoke about, the, uh, about fad diets. This is the time of year when people are very conscious of the weight that they're going to gain over Christmas and New Year. And they will start crash dieting to make way for all the weight that they're going to gain. So the reason that I think this is a good episode to be talking about at this stage of the year is because your ability to navigate the festive period without gaining weight or gaining minimal weight, it doesn't just, it's its not based on a few hints and tips of what to do on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve or Boxing Day. Like that's, it's got nothing to do with that. And it's got everything to do with the way that you think, your mindset around it, the way that you think about Christmas and New Year, the way that you approach it. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna give you an exercise to do that I give to my clients when they go on holiday or when it comes up to Christmas and New Year or when it comes up to summer or uh, half term or things like that, where traditionally a person might gain some weight. Now, if you, here's what to do, okay? Close your eyes. Don't do that if you're walking or driving. Um, but if you're in a position, close your eyes. Fast forward your mind to the, oh, let's check actually. Let's see what the Monday is. So the first Monday in January is the 6th. Yeah, that's going to be a terrible start to a January because New Year's Eve is on the Tuesday and people are going to be like, ah, what's the point starting my diet? Let's just keep going for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then it's the weekend, so might as well start on Monday. Most people are going to be getting started on the 6th of January. So fast forward your mind to the 6th of January. It's the day when you've decided that New Year, New Me, this is when the diet starts, blah, blah, blah. And you step on the scales. Now, you're, how, how are you going to feel about that? What's it been like in the past? Have you been 10 pounds heavier, 15 pounds heavier, 20 pounds heavier than when you last stepped on them on the 15th of December, whatever? Um, there's no right or wrong answer to this. There's no right or wrong amount. There's no right or wrong number. How much weight you gain is how you choose to act and behave throughout the festive period. It's, what's more important is how do you feel about it? Like, what do you wish the number was? Are you happy that it's where it is? Because you've uh, taken responsibility for all the choices that you made. You very consciously ate the way you ate, drank the way you drank, knew what the outcome was going to be. Or are you shocked? Are you upset? Are you sad? Are you disappointed, deflated, disheartened, dejected? All the ones that start with D and end with D. Um, because, I mean, ultimately, you did it, right? You did it to yourself. Some of it was intentional because you consciously made choices that you wanted to make. Some of it might have been unintentional because you've still got issues around eating and you were doing some comfort eating or emotional eating or whatever the case might be. Um, but yeah, here, here is the exercise that I give people to do, right? So fast forward to the 6th of January. You're looking back on the festive period. 
you're thinking back to Christmas, thinking back to New Year, are you 100% happy with all the choices that you make? If you could go back, would you do any of it differently? I, I think most people would. Like They'll be like, do you know what? I wish I hadn't bought so many bottles of Prosecco. I wish I hadn't bought so many bottles of Baileys. I wish I had just thrown that thing out instead of eating it to use it up. Right? You may not regret everything. I mean, I hope you don't. That'd be a terrible Christmas. But there will be some aspects of it that you're not entirely happy with. So the exercise that I give people to do, like when it's holidays, etc., is fast forward your mind to the 6th of January or when you wake up the first morning you're back from your holiday or whatever it is, the other side of September, and you're looking back on the period that's just gone by. What, what do you want to be able to say? So let's talk about the three parts of enjoyment first of all, okay? Um, I should have started with that. The three parts of enjoyment, something that I've made up that I use a lot with my clients, and it's it's understanding that enjoyment is not just one thing, right? Sorry, I'm drinking that noisily because I'm trying to do it quickly and keep my throat lubricated. Uh, enjoyment is not just having a drink. It's not just going out for a meal. It's not just eating something. There are, in in my eyes, there are three parts to enjoyment, right? So part one is the build-up. And this can be anything, not just Christmas. It can be a holiday, half-term, a weekend away, a night in a hotel, whatever. A meal out, a takeaway, even things like scaling it down a bit. Um, it's the build-up. It's the excitement. It's the, in two weeks' time, I'm going to be doing this thing. But let's stick with Christmas, right? So it's the start of December. Um, you're starting to buy Christmas presents, you, the place is getting festive, you're going to markets, you're going to whatever, you're getting right in the mood for it, right? It's the build up, the excitement, all the rest of it. That's part one, right? So we enjoy, we enjoy that. We enjoy the festive side of it. We enjoy, even if it's a holiday, buying clothes, thinking about the holiday, the things you're going to do, booking excursions, getting the holiday money, all this stuff, right? It doesn't matter what it is. If it's a takeaway, looking at the menu, talking to your partner, deciding what you're going to have, waiting for the delivery driver to bring it to the door, right? All the, it doesn't matter what it is, you can transfer it to anything. Part one is the build up. Part two is the thing itself. So we're already there, right? It's the thing itself, it's the event, it's the occasion, it's Christmas. It's Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day. And you enjoy it to the max, it's brilliant. Now, part three, this is the part that most people miss out on is part three of the enjoyment. Part three of the enjoyment is the ability to look back and still enjoy it. Still enjoy the memory, fully enjoy it, right? Not, not, have, not be riddled with guilt, not be riddled with shame, not be riddled with regrets. To be able to think back and go, that was bloody brilliant. I loved absolutely everything about that. I would not have changed any of it for the world. Those are the three parts of enjoyment. If you are not achieving all three parts, then you are not enjoying yourself. Let that sink in for a minute. So I, I fucking feel like I say this all the time. I speak to a lot of people. Um, I have a lot of conversations with people. Who, and I will do on the run up to Christmas, hundreds of members will be like, oh, what should I do about Christmas? Should I track? Should I do this? Or should I just enjoy myself? And I know what people, you know what people mean when they say that. I'm going to go on, you know, I'm not going to worry about what I'm eating. I'm just going to go on holiday and enjoy myself. And what they mean is they're going to eat and drink to excess. Um, and that's fine. But it's not really enjoyment. It's, 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 it's a fallacy. It's this, you've created this idea that drinking equals enjoyment, that eating to excess equals enjoyment, that eating that entire packet of, of nuts is somehow you enjoying yourself. You've attached consumption to enjoyment. Um, and the thing is, if you wake up the next day and regret your decision, feel guilty about your decision, feel shame, wish you could go back, like, why did I eat that? Why did I have all that? I didn't need that. Um, you, you're not enjoying yourself. You're living the lie of enjoyment. You're, 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 you're conforming to, oh, I hate talking like this because I sound like some 
crazy person, but you're you're conforming to what society tells us enjoyment is supposed to be like. You know, enjoying your life is supposed to be going to restaurants and drinking in a social setting and ordering all this and having the dessert and eating the three courses and clearing every plate and drinking all the drinks. That's that's what the world tells you enjoyment's supposed to be. Because it gets you out spending money, um, keeping the world ticking over. But if you wake up the next day and feel bad about anything, I mean, there's a caveat to that where you might have a poor relationship with food. You might have been absolutely fine, but you just think of desserts in a bad way and it makes you feel bad. Um, that's slightly different. But bringing it back to Christmas, you you wake up on the 6th of January. What do you want to be able to look back on the Christmas of 2024 and be able to say? So, and this is how we do it, right? We, we think about it just now. On, the, on Monday, the 6th of January, I want to be able to look back on the three weeks previous and say that I, what? I spent time with friends and family. I caught up with all the people I wanted to catch up with. Um, I made great food decisions. I didn't eat for the sake of it. I didn't use up all the Christmas food just because it's got Santa on it and you can't take that into January. Um, I didn't eat all the desserts just because they were there. Um, I understood that, yes, some food was going to be wasted and it had to go in the bin. I am not a food bin. I am not going to eat thousands of calories just to stop something from going in a bin because that's going to add weight to my body that I'm then going to spend time, money, energy and effort losing in the new year. Um, and it's all these things, right? So on the 6th of January, I want to be able to look back on the Christmas and New Year of 2024 and say this, 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 and this, right? Then we bring that to the present. Well, maybe not the present. And I don't mean Christmas present. I mean the here and now. Um, maybe not the right now because it's only October, but maybe as we get into November, how can I start acting in accordance with the person that I want to be on the 6th of January? Somebody in the group recently, her name's Tamara, um, she recently went on a two-week all-inclusive to wherever, I can't remember. But she came back and honestly, you should have seen the NSV section that she posted. It was the biggest, most detailed and in-depth one I've ever seen. And it all started with this exercise where right before she went on holiday, I said, when you come back and you've got home, you've you know, you've know, done whatever, whatever time you get in, unpacked your bags, sorted the washing, went to your bed, blah, blah, blah. You've woke up the next day and it's time to reflect and think back to the holiday. What do you want to be able to say? Like I want to, well, she doesn't, she's actually stopped drinking now. Um, but she was like, I want to be able to, to say that I ate um, well most of the time. I balanced my meals well most of the time. I didn't snack all day. I didn't feel the need to have dessert every day just because it's there. I want to make decisions that I want to make, not just because it's an all-inclusive, just because it's a buffet, just because it's paid for. Um, and she stated all that and wrote it all out in her check-ins before she went. Then she went on her holiday. Then she came back and done another check-in and basically said everything that I said I was going to do or everything I said that I wanted to feel on the other side of my holiday, it happened. I acted like that person on holiday. I came back from my holiday. I'm able to look back on my holiday and 100% enjoy it. There's no regret. There's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no uh, wishing that anything was done differently. She would not go back and change a single thing. And she said that it was the best holiday that she has ever had. I think she said ever had. I'm sure she did. The best holiday she's ever had. And all that... and. Again, in the past, like people book all-inclusives and get all excited about all the stuff they're going to eat and drink, then come back and regret it. They, they, they get, they're destroyed by what they see on the scales. They're so upset, like, it wasn't that bad. I didn't eat that much. How can I have gained all that? And it, that ruins your holiday. Yes, you went and you still had a great time and at the time, but if you come back, whether it's a holiday or whether it's Christmas and New Year, and you are filled with regret and dread and guilt and shame and all these things because of decisions that you made, 
then you didn't enjoy yourself at all. And it is, you need to start questioning what you think enjoyment means. You know, like I said, we live in a world that forces us to think that joy, enjoy, you know, excess is enjoyment. Oh, if you, if you don't drink, you're not enjoying yourself. You know, I get it all the time. Like I've not, it's two years now that I've not drank for. How do you, know, what do, what do you do in a night out if you don't drink? Well, I don't drink. I remember everything. I have meaningful conversations with people. I go home at a reasonable time instead of allowing alcohol to keep me out all night, wasting money and making an arse of myself. And then I wake up the next day at 6 a.m. and take the dogs out for a walk in the sunshine and fresh air. What do you do at the weekend? Pissing all over your shoes in the toilet and being sick on the Sunday morning. Um, <laughs> so yeah, society tells us what enjoyment's supposed to look like and too many of us buy into it. I regret, I don't regret the years that I drank alcohol, but I do regret the years that I bought into what enjoyment was supposed to look like. Um, because it made me try to fit in in places that I didn't fit in because, well, I thought, well, you're supposed to go to the pub every weekend. You're supposed to go out every weekend and go to clubs and whatever. Anyway, enough of that shit. Um, so I'll ask you this question before we wrap up. Fast forward, 6th of January, 2025. You're thinking about the last three weeks. You're thinking about all the things you've done, all the things you've seen, the things you've eaten, the things you've drank, the gifts you received, the gifts you gave, all of that stuff. Do you wish you could go back and change any of it? If so, now it's not to say that you didn't enjoy yourself, but let's let's say on Boxing Day you completely overdid it and that's a particular day that you feel quite shitty about. So don't let it ruin the whole festive period for you because maybe maybe Christmas Eve was incredible. Maybe Christmas Day was incredible and you would not go back and change a single thing. But Boxing Day, you did something um, under the guise of enjoyment. And if you look back on that particular day and look at the things you did, said, thought, drank, ate, whatever, and you wish you could go back and do it differently, then you didn't enjoy that day. You didn't fully enjoy it. Remember the three parts of enjoyment. Part one, the build up, the excitement, regardless of what it is. Uh, step two is the thing itself, the ability to enjoy the day itself, which many people do. Part three is the part that most people miss out on, the ability to enjoy the memory. Fully enjoy the memory, not miss out on any of it, not wishing you could go back and change things, do it differently, live it over again. Um, that's the part that people miss out on. So if you want to fully enjoy the festive period, do these two things. Project your mind into the future and place yourself in your own shoes on the 6th of January and look back at the previous three weeks. What would what would that version of you like to be able to look back and say? And then part two is bringing that into the present. What are the decisions? What are the things that I need to do each day to make sure that happens? What what person, what kind of person do I need to be to make sure that happens? How will, you know, how will my Let's think about my usual behaviors. I would normally eat like this or I would normally drink like this. Is that going to play into what I want to be able to say on the 6th of January or is it, or is it going to go against it? Now, that sounds very simplistic. And for those of you listening who aren't members or haven't worked with me or we haven't worked on anything yet, it might sound quite overwhelming. Um, but for those of you who are members, you know, these are all things that you can bring up at your check-ins or things we can talk about. They're things that we can build on ahead of time. We've got lots of time to do it. So, yeah. But this is not just limited to the festive period. Use this on your holidays, your weekends away, your half terms, your birthdays, your takeaways, your meals out, whatever it is. Don't just get all excited about the thing and then get all excited about the day itself. Think about how you want, how you want, not how you are going to, how you want to feel, how you want to think, how you want to be afterwards, because how you want to feel afterwards is determined by how you act on the occasion. And then you just bring that, I want to feel like this, therefore, I want to act like this version of me when the time comes. Anyway, enough from me. Until next time. <laughs>